After successfully fixing the tank on the steam vac, I thought I was all finished. But I went to turn on the unit and it turns out the brushes will not move. So I figured out what happened was that the tank, as it was leaking, leaked down into the um, mechanism that makes the brushes turn. So I'm going to show you my solution for fixing that. So the first thing you need to do is pull out the brushes. All you got to do with that is just kind of gently lift up and like that the whole piece just pops out. And what you want to do is just turn this part that sticks out here, this stem, and make sure everything turns properly. There's no, uh, there's just mechanical gears. You can see these are gear shaped and they just mesh into each other. So that is not the source of the problem. So I turned on the unit and powered it up and this little white square here should be turning uh, while the brushes are turning. And I did make sure I verified that the switch was turned on to brush. Um, so it's not a switch problem either. And this was simply not turning. So I have to go further into it. The way to do that, once you've pulled out the uh, brush setup, is, well, there's six screws. So after you pull it out, there's one, two, three, four, and then two on the body, five and six. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you keep an eye on which screws are which. After removing the screws from the bottom, flip the unit over and then you can remove the extractor. So you just lift up on this. There's no screws or anything with this. Just lift up. There we go. And then pivot it forward and take the extractor off. There's one screw that was behind the extractor. Take this out and then pivot the hold downs for the waste tank forward just to get them out of the way because we're about to take the front nose piece off. They are not screwed down at this point. It's, they're just snap fit here and here. Okay, so just kind of put your fingers underneath here gently and lift up. Doesn't take a whole lot of force, but it might take a little bit more than you think. So just be careful with it. Be gentle. Uh, parts are getting kind of hard to find for these things, so you don't want to break them. Again, underneath, kind of gently lift. And then as you pivot up this front of this right here, this brush knob, brush switch knob will come off. Just set that aside. And then we can pivot the whole thing forward. And again, it takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit more pressure than you might think, but you're not gonna break it. Just pivot forward there and it unsnaps. Now that we're on the inside, what we're looking for is this unit right here. This is the brush motor. Now it's not actually a, uh, an electric motor. What it does is it uses the suction of the air passing through a turbine in here to turn the white socket where the brushes go into. If there's something wrong with this unit, the brushes won't turn. So this is most likely where the source of the problem is. So there's a hose here and a hose here. Just kind of disconnect those. Take these two screws here and here. Now this piece will just lift up and it kind of engages right here. There's a spring that engages on this arm. Just be aware of that as you lift it up and out. Whole piece comes out like that including the filter. So, we're done with this part for the moment. Let's get it off the bench. These get screwed in through the bottom. So, when we took those out, now this bottom piece is loose. 
and this is where the problem is. So once those screws are out, we can just lift this off of here. And I've been in this already, so it's a little cleaner than it was. Um, if it's still pretty dirty, or you got a lot of grease in there, you may want to consider cleaning up. Let me take this filter out of the way. Okay. So you can see better what's going on here. Now, this right here, this little bearing, mine was completely rusted and locked up. Even now, I soaked it for about 24 hours and the inside does not turn at all. It's completely locked. Uh, the good news is, even though there's two bearings in here, the bottom one down there does not get water dripping in it when the machine is leaking. And that's where the whole source of the problem is, is my tank was leaking and it leaked down into this motor and rusted the bearing. So, pull this bearing off. If you're having difficulty with it, you can gently take and pry underneath of it. Just gently make sure you go around. So don't pry all at once. Just kind of go gently and it will come off of there. If not, put a little bit of penetrating, say like a WD-40 or something in there um, to penetrate the, the rust and then it will come off of the shaft. Once you get the bearing off the shaft, you can pull the gears out. Of course, remove any hair or anything like that that's in them. Set those aside. Okay, and down in here, you can see the other bearing. This actually is the top bearing because when it's in the machine, it's like this. So this is the top bearing. This top bearing in mine is in great shape, so I don't need to replace it. But let me show you what's going on here and why I don't want to replace it while I'm in here. I unscrew these two screws. So we can pull the top of the motor housing off. All right, when we do that, then there are these little hooks, little clasps. And you just kind of put your finger underneath of it one at a time and they unsnap. Okay, and then the whole top just lifts off. Now this is the turbine in there. So mine is flowing pretty good because I've actually already been in here and oiled it up to make sure that the bearing is, is nice. If yours is at all stiff, again you want to turn it over and soak this bearing. You can use WD-40 to start with but remember this is a penetrant not an oil so this will break up the rust and give it a good solid coat and let it get in there and then take the wheel and move it around and around get that bearing moving and you'll probably find a puddle of rust colored water uh, WD-40 there go ahead and kind of mop that out Kleenex Kind of wipe that up out of there. And then use real oil. 3-in-1 motor oil is what I happen to be using. And drip that down pretty heavily along the bearing so it has a chance to soak in. Even though these are sealed bearings, if you put enough oil on them, it will penetrate. So, again, I didn't want to take this bearing out even though I bought a 10-pack of new bearings. This shaft is press fit into the the bearing here and the problem with that is getting this to disengage from the bearing without damaging anything in here there's no pry point that you can use without breaking the blade um, I'm afraid of hammering on it or even pressing too hard because I may shatter the outside of this anyway make sure that this is good and check that out flows pretty nice so that is going to be fine all we need to do is put in this new bearing so these can go after you've cleaned up in here and this is good and oiled and you've taken some of the excess out you don't need to take it all out but you also don't want it dripping in there and then collecting dirt 
you can put the gear back on. The one with the square goes at the bottom here and engages with that top one. Okay, so here's the 10 pack of bearings that I bought as replacements. So I will put the specs on these down in the description. Um, about a 10 pack, it's they're only eight dollars or so for the whole 10 pack. And I figure this won't be probably the last time I need to do this. Take one of these brand new bearings that turns so nicely and set that down on the top, kind of press it on there. It's probably not going to be a super tight press fit, but it doesn't need to be. So that now will engage with this bottom fitting when I turn that over and let's check pretty nice that turns pretty decently now it's gonna work let's put the top back on again just kinda line it up and make sure things are lined up properly and they snap into place okay now the bottom cover there we go alright and two screws go back in the top here to hold the top of the motor on these two screws don't go back in yet. Those, when they're attached in the cleaner, will come in from the bottom. Now ready to put the brush motor back in. So at this point, take your filter and put it with the hook side toward the front of the machine and drop it in this slot. Got to kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze as you drop it in. And then push it down there takes a little bit of finagling but you press it down and you can feel it now touching the floor see as I lift that up it actually drops all the way that's good we want it out of the way for the next step so we're gonna put the brush motor back in this has to engage with the brush interlock switch which prevents the brushes from spinning when the handles in the upright position so this has to be lifted up here then this slot needs to engage with the filter like such and you have to move the hose out of the way there we go and the whole thing sits down at this point while it's still loose we take this lever here and engage it with the interlock like that so this is on top that way when this goes forward it engages so you kind of press it down looks like it's in good shape okay two of the screws go back in from this side one here and one here okay those two screws are back in now you can reconnect the hoses make sure they slide on enough where they're solidly engaged last thing we need is more leaks same thing on this side gently press those on put the upper cover back on and that you just kind of pivot from the front line that up as such the holes here are not quite snapped down just give it a good snap the whole thing snaps down into place these just make sure that they are also snapped down and then put the screw back here. The brush switch has this little hooked lever that engages back onto the brush switch arm. Okay, then we can turn the machine over and finish this up. Now, before we button this whole thing up, let's go ahead and make sure that this is working properly. So, we want this white socket to be rotating. That's what makes the brushes go around.
I put my finger on this and felt that it was spinning and made sure that it was nice and strong and then a little pressure wasn't going to stop the brushes. The two long black screws go in these holes here. Those hold the brush motor down to the base of the vacuum. The two long silver screws, at least in this case on this machine, go down in the side pockets here. Then there are four left. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Once the screws are back in, put the brushes back in. So you might need to line up the square peg with the square hole. As you put this back in, and then press it back into the slots. Give a little press. Check one more time. And we're good to go. And I'm finally off to go clean my carpets. Thanks for watching.